it's Amanda Watson with MrsWatsonEducation.com, which is my personal blog where I share with you the other teachers of the world's tips and tricks I've picked up along the way to help make your teaching career a little bit easier because we all know teaching's really hard and we need each other to survive. So this is just what I'm doing to try to help out a little bit. So today's topic is how to share your digital lessons and worksheets with your students. So this is a second video in a four part tutorial series. So this is actually the third post. Um, and I'm going to be talking about and showing you digital worksheets that we've created and that would be the last post. So if you don't know about that, please go back and see that. And um, this will also be applied to if, if you do a digital INB, how you can share that with your students. So it's kind of um, works for both or anything actually. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Now just be mindful that I'm just sharing with you some things I've figured out you may have other ways of sharing and that's completely fine. I just want to help out those who don't have those options. So I love my Google Drive. I work primarily through Google Drive, even though my county is a Microsoft county, just because it's where I was trained in that and that's my comfort zone. I'm a Google um, educator and I just love all the features they have. So I'm going to show you what how to do this in Google as well as how I've made it work for PowerPoint or for um, Office products um, because that's what I have to share with my students because we're a power a office county. So first we're going to go into our digital worksheet. Close that one out. Same thing. Um, and if you don't know how to make this, please go back and watch my last video or read through my last blog and it's going to show you all about that. That's not about that's not what we're doing here today. OK, so I have my digital worksheet and I want to get it to my students now. So what I'm going to do is create a share link for that. It's one of ways to get it. There's all, many, many. So make sure when you do this, you have it in the anyone with uh, um, the link can view. If it's restricted, you're going to get emails from everyone that tries to open it. And that's kind of a headache for you. I like making my life easier, not harder. Make sure it's in view settings. And then you're going to copy that link. Now, I'm going to say um, this. The If you don't know how to copy and use the share settings for Google, I would go to this blog post I have right here, um, how to share your, because I go through all sorts of options and I highly recommend you figure out how to do the copy, the forced copy option. It would make your life so much easier if you are a Google school um, and you're not using Google Classroom, which does so many amazing things already for you. Um, it's very highly integrated there. So this is just, if you have Google Classroom, you are a step ahead. You don't probably have to watch the rest of this video. Um, you might want to watch that last, this tutorial just to see the settings, but that's pretty easy. Okay, so back to this. So I'm going to start by sharing my Google worksheet into my LMS, which is Canvas. It would be similar to Schoology, any, any LMS that has a place for students to see and upload assignments. Now, um, you would do worksheet. I hate that that went there. OK. Um, you might have directions and do Friday, right? You might have all bunch of stuff. You could put in videos and tutorials. You could do all sorts of things there. Um, but now I want to put in my worksheet. So I'm just going to control V, insert that link. Um, I don't want it to say link. So maybe I could say worksheet do Friday again because you never, it's always good to have things multiple places for students. I teach sixth graders, so I try to make things as clear as possible. I could do that here. And now that whole word is linked to my worksheet. Now let me show you what that looks like. I have to go through, I could assign points, I could do whatever. I want it to be an uploaded file um, because they're going to resubmit that worksheet to me that they picked up, right? So now if they go in, this is what they'd see. And they click on that and they would be able to go into their Google Drive. Um, they'd see this. Now, this is linked to mine, so it doesn't make me, but they wouldn't be able to go through and edit yours. They would just have to go through and you would teach them how to make a copy to save it into their drive, um, unless you use the force copy link, which is great. Um, and then they would upload that document to your um, LMS as you asked for it. OK, so that's one way. Now let me show you how that would look on the PowerPoint slide. So the first thing, because I figured out hacks to make all this work because I love my Google stuff. Um, and they just, this is a newer feature, which I love. So now you could download slides into Microsoft PowerPoint version. So I just downloaded the same worksheet that I created in Google Slides, and now it's going to be a digital worksheet in PowerPoint. So I'm going to go to my one drive that I have for my county, um, because I don't even own PowerPoint on my personal computer. So this is my integrated linked one, um, digital online, right? Um, and I'm just going to 
slide that in, and now I have, I open this up, the same exact worksheet that I created in Google Slides, but it's been converted to a PowerPoint. And it's fabulous because I didn't have to do anything else. It's great, okay? That makes my life easier to make sure I could integrate both parts to my, for my students. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go share. Same idea, do you want to do it to specific people, right? So you don't want it to just send to an email address. I want it to be able to be linked in my LMS. So I'm going to click where it says anyone with a link, which is the same thing that we kind of did in Google. Um, I'm going to not allow editing, right? I don't want them to edit my copy. I want them to have their copy, which will be nice. This is going to make it kind of forced. I'm going to now copy that link and in my assignment so now we have my assignment I can go ahead and do this right if I, I probably wouldn't have both I'd have one or the other whatever I'm comfortable with or my county requires and now my PowerPoint is now linked to that assignment or I could have uploaded it you know there's lots of ways you can do that I'm just showing the easiest versions I figured out and my mouse just died cool okay so that's unfortunate when your mouse dies midway through a video. But I'm going to go with it. Okay, use my touchpad. So now I have my same worksheet that the students will have a copy, and you just have to kind of tell them, okay, now upload, finish it and upload it into the assignment bar in your LMS. Very nice and simple, okay? So now let's look at some of the other platforms you might be using in blended learning, digital remote learning, or just in your classroom and now that we're all techied up because we figured it out with Corona. Okay, so this is Teams. It would be similar to um, Zoom or uh, Microsoft Meet, right? Office Meet. So you would, can have a few options. You can upload the file into your classroom files and I'm just going to drag and drop because it's here, um, but you could just do a new upload and find it in the computer. So now students have access to it there, which is great. You can send it in a post. So maybe I want to control V, send that URL because the student asked it, like I lost it. There it goes. Okay. Or I could in the post that I'm talking to my students, I can upload it from my computer. The same idea. I've done this a few times today. So you see all the different versions trying to get a good video, upload the file, right? And now I'm going to keep both blah, blah, blah. And that's just because I loaded it in the files already and it's doing it again. So now my students have it there. They can see in the feed. And that's just as easy as that. So trying to make things accessible for students and make things as easy for you, pick which options are best for you. So I'm going to keep going with some more options. Now, I don't have a tutorial on this because it's a little bit too much for me and I know it's going to be too much for my sixth graders to grasp. If you have are, are familiar with OneNote or maybe you don't know anything about it, it might be worth looking into because it's a great feature and it's very easily integrated right here into Microsoft Teams. Um, and you could actually make classes with notebooks and you could in, like add different pages and videos and slides. It's really, really cool and I wish I felt more confidence in it um, with my own skills for that and I wish I didn't it's a little bit complex looking and I have a feeling my sixth graders would be a little bit overwhelmed and I don't want their lives already crazy enough with everything that's going on I want to do things to help them and not overwhelm them more and that's why I'm deciding to go other routes but it may be perfect for you and your students so please look into it one note um, great features they can draw on things it's it's just really cool um, another option I want you to just know about before I finish with my last option which is the one I'll be using is Google Forms. If you don't know about Google Forms, um, you can easily share documents through Google Forms. Um, well, not documents. You can actually have to recreate them. So it takes a little bit more time on your part than just like set, making the digital worksheet. But you can like put text in there, videos. Tell me how you feel about this um, this this passage or write your first paragraph of your essay. There's so many things you can do with Google Forms and they're great because they auto generate, they can auto grade assignments for you. They auto generate like spreadsheets that you can make manipulate data. Um, you can use them for so many things. So I have an, an other two blog series I highly recommend you looking at is Google Forms for student assessment and Google Forms for classroom management. Just some ideas. There's so many more things you could do with them. I personally will be not using this, I probably won't be using Teams um, very often 
if I have a choice. I don't know. But what I would be doing is creating and sharing, I'm going to show you my Bitmoji, Nearpods, worksheets converting them to Nearpods because I love Nearpod and the interactivity that students can have with it. I know a lot of counties don't provide Nearpod. I'm so grateful mine does. Um, so I would do Nearpods and a combination of that and Google Forms to make my worksheets. I probably won't be doing too many of these, but I just want to show with you the options you do have. Okay. My last one is going to be showing you my Bitmoji virtual classroom, right? So this is what I have as my home page. I have it on my home page, no matter what changes I make to, and I'm going to show you. So this is the same thing as this, right? No matter what changes I make here, it's going to change automatically on my Canvas site. And if I have this linked, this Bitmoji classroom linked to my parents' emails and my grade book, if I send it anywhere, anytime it's, um, the student, anyone clicks on the link, they'll see the newest version of it. So I could do updates, um, which makes it great. If you don't know about Bitmoji Classrooms, I highly recommend, okay, it's a six part series. It's gonna take you some time, but they are game changers. Um, this is my intro one. And then I have starting from the top, designing your classroom, adding your Bitmoji, sharing it, adding multiple rooms, making a website, embedding it into your LMS like you see here. So I have a whole tutorial series, series on how to do that. I recommend this is my springboard this is what I started with and I'm like oh there's so much more I could do and then I started these digital um, work um, worksheets and IMBs anyways okay going back to my Bitmoji classroom I want to because I am choosing this option versus the others. The others are still great because I want all my stuff, my students only going to one place next year to find things. So because they're already going to be overwhelmed by their math teacher wants them doing Khan Academy and the PE teacher has them doing all sorts of other stuff. Like there's going to be so many things for digital and remote. I want to try to streamline my class as much as I can so that they um, know where to find things and know my expectations. And just that's my comfort zone. Yours might be different and that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm to change this to work sheet. It's a new day. I have a new agenda and I want my students to access this worksheet to work on. That's their assignment for the day. So just as I did before, I'm going to paste in my URL and that was my PowerPoint URL, but I could have easily pasted in my Google URL if that's what I'd use. Okay. So now that is there, it's linked, it's live. So students can go there and let's see how this works because this is where it gets cool. Watch. Dun, 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 drum roll, please. Oh my goodness, without doing anything but editing my Bitmoji classroom, my Canvas LMS, my main page is uploaded there and students can immediately find my PowerPoint worksheet that I just shared. This is what I, this is like, golden for me. This is where I'm so happy because in the emergency chaos that we did quarter four, I just was, we had so many different systems and I wanted to make it simple for my students because they need simple because their lives are crazy and this is what makes it simple for them. A little bit more work for me, but it's okay because I love this. Everything's linked. Once you set it all up, it's done. You can see my different rooms and it's live. So remember, anywhere I shared this classroom, my Canvas, my emails, my grade book, it's all going to be automatically updated immediately, which is so good. So please look into those Bitmoji classrooms, but that would be how I share it as well. Um, last thing, so if I don't have Canvas where I'm doing the assignment checking there, if I don't have um, Google Classroom where it makes the does the grading, how would I grade those? How would I access them? So what I would do if that was the case for me and that's where I was going is I would probably make a in my drive, my Google Drive or my OneDrive, I'd probably make a folder for each period and in that period a folder I'd have a folder for each student just like you see here. So student ABC in sixth grade science, I would then either share the folder with them using their their account information, um, their, their names mostly, it's linked, or have them create a folder and share it with me. And once it's shared, everything they put into this folder, I will be able to see and access for grading and monitoring and helping them out, right? So that would just be kind of a little hack I would do to make that easier in the long run. Um, but you would have to do a little upfront training with students of copying the document loading it in there to edit it in. Um, but I think most kids are really, really good tech. I think that would be easy once you get started. And like I said, once this folder is shared, everything they put in there is shared and they have to organize their files and or they should anyway. So that's just a little trick there. Okay. So I think that's it. Like I said, there are so many other ways to share documents and share things with students. These are just a few of the ones I wanted to outline that I think will be most useful for me and my county and my, um, my viewers and definitely those Bitmoji classroom kind of leads up to that. So lots of information. 
please go to my blog. Remember, there's other videos and tutorials that will help you along the way. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. And check out my social media. Follow things for new updates. Um, subscribe to my blog. Stay connected with me because we need to be connected in this world. Okay, bye.